Silk is an amazing fiber to work with. It can lead strength to your spinning shine. It has great qualities for both helping you stay warm and stay cool. It adds lovely drape and strength to your knitted projects. And I don't dye 100% silk very often. And honestly, there might be a lot more people in this world that dye 100% silk than there are that dye wool-based yarn. Uh, there's tons of silk artists out there. And in fact, a lot of acid dyes are marketed uh, with the colors that they give at a particular depth of shade on silk uh, versus wool, and then indicate the colors might be different on wool. So yeah, today is gonna be all about silk. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And this might be one of the latest times I've done my introduction in an intro lately. <laughs> I have this package of silk embroidery floss, embroidery lace from Wool to Die For. These are three gram mini skeins of late weight, <laughs> of lace weight, 100% silk yarn. And my thought is that I can use this for a variety of different experimentations and projects because the other 100% silk yarn that I have a lot of, that I have easy access to is Luminance from Knit Picks. And this lace weight, it's also a lace weight, 100% silk yarn. Uh, how many yards? It's got a million yards. It's got 878 yards per 100 grams. And I cannot imagine making mini skeins out of this myself. I'd worry about snapping it. Ah, that sounds like a nightmare. And. I don't know if I'm gonna use these minis in today's video because sometimes I can't make up my mind what I want to do on this expensive yarn. This is very expensive for 100 grams, over $20 a skein when you buy it full price. But I'm sitting here thinking, and all I wanna do is dye it a neon fluorescent rainbow. I'm not sure if I've tried fluorescent colors on 100% silk. Certainly I've done it on wool silk blends, but not 100% silk. I do not know how it will turn out, but I think I want to try and see where we end up. And I think that I'll leave it up to you to give me some suggestions of what kind of color mixing or things you want to see me do on this uh, embroidery lace weight. But yeah, let's plan to dye a variegated colorway out of lace weight silk. <laughs> To get started, we need to pre-soak the yarn. And right here I have some plain tap water. I don't know if we'll try an immersion style and if we'll have like wool beside it, or if we'll do like a countertop followed by like wrapping it in a jelly roll. Maybe we'll do that. I haven't done like a super classic hand painted and then steamed colorway like that in a really long time. So maybe we'll give that a try. But I do want to go ahead and pre-soak this yarn overnight. You know what, I'm gonna add six skeins, so 18 grams of the embroidery floss to the bucket because we may as well dye some of these in the same colors because then we'll know for future projects if these mini skeins could be a good stand-in for luminance. Um, and I mean, the, the strands look very, very similar. And so I think that they are a reasonable comparison for one another. It's just, you know, one of them has a lot less yardage. Now, normally I might not use like three gallons of water for the pre-soak, but I used this water from another project. I had other yarn, actually it was 50% superwash wool, 50% silk yarn pre-soaking in there. And so I figured that we would use this. But it does take silk a while to get really saturated and so therefore it is worth doing at least an overnight pre-soak when you want to dye silk because you don't want wet pat or dry patches in your yarn. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Chemnitz Fiber patrons including Jessica Parco, Don Jans, Karen Siegel, Tamara Spanes, and the rest of the names you see on the screen right now. The Chemnitz Patreon is a really great way that you can help support the content here, and you also get to vote on the theme for each month's Die Pop PS episode, which patrons also get early access to, and there's lots of other fun perks. You can learn more over at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. 
For our fluorescent neon rainbow today, we're gonna use Jacquard's Fluorescent Rainbow, which includes black light blue, chartreuse, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent orange, fluorescent red, and hot fuchsia. Uh, some of the names on the labels are some of the older names, not the names that some of these colors were newly released as. This video isn't sponsored, but Jacquard did send me these dyes for free. Now, I did a preliminary experiment with the black light blue and added some turquoise to it. There is not a fluorescent blue acid dye pigment. Black light blue is a mixture of a colorless fluorescent acid dye pigment with some blue dye. And so we're gonna pump up the blue dye a little bit. You can add some turquoise to black light blue and still see the fluorescence. It's just maybe not quite as bright as it would be without adding that blue. So that's just something to take into consideration. So I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and took some quantities of these dyes. Uh, I took just like a little dollop of each of the colors and dissolved it in some hot tap water. I did have my scale out, but I wasn't precisely measuring the colors. My goal was to have, I don't know, maybe around a quarter of a gram of each of them because I might use it for some other projects as well. And I decided to keep the turquoise separate from the black light blue for now. We'll mix them as needed and maybe check with the black light along the way. I've laid out some plastic wrap in a bit of a circle and now I'm going to, I think very briefly, put the 100% silk yarn through my spin dryer. And the reason why I'm going to do that is that I want to try to remove some of the liquid so we can add the liquid back in. I don't know how absorbent it is, and so I have no idea if I diluted these dyes too much, but we're gonna find out. But I did forget about something, and that is acid. Two, three. All right, I just moved the yarn in here with some tap water. I added a few skeins, a few skeins, uh, three tablespoons of white vinegar. I am gonna let this soak for, I think, about five minutes. Then I'm gonna put the yarn in the spin dryer to remove some of the liquid. It'll still be damp. Uh, and at that point, uh, we'll uh, come over to start dyeing it. I do have a skein of Nitpick's Wool of the Andes as well. And I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it, uh, but I do know I want to make it fluorescent and actually to give to my kids art teacher. But that's beside the point. All right, here's my thought process because silk is not <laughs> the um, most absorbent of fibers. Wool is a lot more absorbent. So I'm going to have this here just in case I need to like soak up any runoff that we get. And as for our itty bitty minis, um, we'll decide what we're going to do with that as we see how the color kind of comes into this yarn. Because what I don't know <laughs> is if, like when I pour the liquid on, if that's just gonna start running off. Uh, that would not be so good. Not at all. Okay, but first, to our black light blue, I'm gonna take a little bit of this turquoise and add it in. And actually, I think I can sh check. Why don't we check? Oh yeah. We still see the fluorescence there. Definitely. Pop on the black light. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, and so, oh, we don't want that to fall on the floor. Okay, and now my plan, why don't we start with the blue like here? Okay, yeah, that is not soaking in super fast. So I'm gonna need to I guess manually assist. Do I want a syringe? Not really. I mean, I don't really want to use a syringe. So I think that as I pour, because you see it, oh, I might need a syringe. This is not the best fiber type for this type of technique. And so my rationale of using the syringe is not to measure the color, but to help me apply it in certain areas because as I add the, the dye on, otherwise it's just gonna bead up. And once the section is more saturated, then I'm able to add that color without much issue. And the nice thing 
is it is going all the way through like this whole section. So that is good. That's what we want. Um, and then, yeah, I can bring this over, just sort of dab, dab, dab things up. And we can continue slowly. I don't think I need a syringe that's quite this big. But yeah, as if I bring the syringe in and add the dye really slow, then we start to get coverage of the particular color in the given section. And so we don't want to damage the fibers, so I'm really, really lightly tapping it in. But the good news, oh, and we started with the blue. Maybe not the best idea, because I wanted to be able to see how the blue, and especially the blue we mix, compares to the other colors. So, I mean, we will have to see. Let's bring our green. I don't know how big each of the sections are gonna be, Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but as I add it, it's slowly sinking in. But initially we just get a nice puddle. <laughs> Maybe I spun out too much of the water, but actually, you know what everyone? Our blue is standing up really, really well to this green. Um, and so that is good because a lot of times, and again, we may need to use a lot more of the blue dye than some of these other colors, but black light blue, just the 1% depth of shade of that color is less vibrant than the corresponding 1% depth of shade of all the other colors of the rainbow. But yeah, okay, this is working well. And I think that chartreuse breaks. There's some areas in here on the bottom, especially some that feel a little more blue and some that feel a little more yellow. And I think that makes sense because I don't believe that there is a green Oh, it looks like it's breaking over here as well. I don't believe there's a green fluorescent acid dye molecule. I believe that uh, radioactive is probably a mixture of yellow and, um, we'll go a little, a little bigger. Um, I think that green is a mixture of a fluorescent yellow acid dye pigment and then a blue would be my hypothesis there. And I think we'll probably flip each of the little sections over as needed, but we have our nice yarn mop. Okay, let's do our yellow and we're going to go a little big with uh, the fluorescent yellow just because poor yellow can get overtaken by its friends very easily. And if we want things to feel yellow in the end, <laughs> sometimes you need to, uh, it's not that we need it to be more intense, but if the blues from the screen are gonna spread, and if some of the pinks from the orange are gonna spread, then we're just gonna want to have a slightly wider section that feels yellow. And I feel like I am making a huge, huge mess. <laughs> Oh man, like I so rarely do it this way anymore. And one of the reasons is there's a risk that the colors could run off. Um, there's a risk the colors could run off. And so, I mean, I guess that's the reason to not recommend doing this on silk um, in this kind of way. It's possible some kind of immersion dye bath would be a better choice. Um, so in that case, what I might be inclined to do would be to have um, maybe multiple cups or jars or something and to do like the primaries first um, and then do, so we do like every other color all at once if that uh, makes any sense. Okay, zip tie. Well, I don't think I want you to be on the yellow. We'll probably want you on like the red. Should we do a little bit more? We're gonna wanna check the other side at some point. We can add more on top. Yeah, so I think if I had spun less liquid out, <laughs> then we would be able to add more a little bit easier. But the downside of removing more liquid, at least at the beginning, is that if we had removed less liquid, then we wouldn't be able to add as much. And right now things aren't dripping. Um, and so not dripping is a good thing. 
is a very good thing. Now as I move on to each color segment, this is the orange, yes, yes. As I move on to each color segment, I'm not starting at the border with the previous color. Um, I'm trying to start, there we go, that looks more orange versus red. Um, I'm trying to start more in the middle because then I have a little bit, not a ton, but a little bit more control over where the colors go um, and the placement of them. Because if I were to start next to the yellow and then the color were to like move and spread, then that yellow, we would lose it. And so that's why it's always one of the first colors I want to do. And I'm gonna be slow and careful when it comes to blending them and using my fingers to help move that color down. Now, through my conversations with Jacquard, I did learn that with black light blue, you can add blues and it will, like maybe you'll end up seeing a little bit reduced fluorescence, but you're not going to completely lose the fluorescence. Here, we'll put this on the orange. But when it comes to the pink, when you add, like if you add a fluorescent pink or just pinks and reds to that fluorescent molecule, um, that colorless fluorescent molecule that's in black, light, blue, then unfortunately you start to see reduced fluorescence. And it's not no fluorescence, but it's absolutely reduced. And I can certainly attest to that personally, um, because just from what I've seen um, from using this color and dip dyeing some black light blue into hot fuchsia. And so that is a video that I have done. Now of the colors, if we, if I pop the like 1% depth of shade back up of all these colors again, the fluorescent red probably needs a little bit more dye than some of the corresponding colors. Just so that way it feels more like red and you feel that neon in there a little bit more. I probably could have made the orange section bigger, but that's okay. This red is so, so pretty. So like if you use more of this dye, then it feels a lot more like a stunning, stunning red and you get more of that feel. How are we doing? The color is going through great. There's a couple, sometimes I'm noticing a couple like dry patches. But overall, these are, these are soaking through the fibers super, super well. And then, don't worry, we'll add lots of color to this in a bit. Um, but what I wanted to do before we did that, I love that I have this other silk just sitting on the counter. Maybe it got some color on it. Oh, this looks so pretty. Uh, I think what I want to do is add a hair more of the turquoise blue to our black light blue because I'm thinking now I want to pump up that blue a bit more and also will make this section a little bit bigger. Now silk is a very interesting fiber and it does not necessarily absorb color that fast. Um, and so therefore, I have no idea how well this will work, if things will blend together, but I'm happy to try. Now, I like doing lace work. This is a lot of yardage of a very fine lace. What would you make out of like this beautiful rainbow color with the, I mean, it's not, it's not a cobweb lace for sure, but it's quite lacy. So I wonder what you guys would all want to make with it. I should probably have removed these popsicle sticks, but I always soak the wooden sticks for a while. And I try, when I'm using more, I try to pick like colors. Um, so I try really hard to say, put like one with reds on it in the pink and things like that. But I do rinse them until the water runs clear. Hot fuchsia is a gorgeous color. But yeah, this is quite messy and probably quite long as well. <laughs> you might start to understand why sometimes if I'm gonna do something like this, I turn it into a time lapse. Oh no! 
Oh no! We're gonna see if we can rescue that spot on the green. Oh shoot. Got a little drop of pink over here. And so what I'm doing here is I'm attempting to blend it in with the other colors. And so there's still a hint of a dot over there, but it is reduced. Um, so that's how I tried to deal with that. I need to do more pink dye, but I'm trying to like bring it in. And I'm happy to blend it with the red. I really don't want to blend it very much with the blue. It's unfortunate because getting a like true fluorescent purple, um, Vivid Violet from Jacquard is a purple and it does have fluorescent, this fluorescent pink right here in it. Uh, and Purple Pop from Derma does as well. And so we're gonna have a little bit of blending between the two colors, but not a lot. I think I'm gonna bring a little bit more blue for some of that overlap. Yeah, because this area right here is just going to be a bit less fluorescent. I mean, assuming things are similar to what I've dealt with already. I have not even set up a steamer basket yet, but you know what I want to do? What's so funny here is of all these colors, look at how this little interface between the blue and the pink really stands out. Uh, and I don't know if that's a good thing. I've turned off. The overhead lights. There's still lots of light in here because it's daytime. <laughs> and check out our neon fluorescent rainbow. Yeah, the purple does feel a little bit dimmer than either just the pink or just the blue. Um, oh, funny. The interface between the blue and the yellow. Oh, you know what? I think there's just less dye there, maybe. Oh, that fluorescent red. It's funny how... Oh, it's so pretty. I, my hypothesis is the fluorescent red is another mixture of the pink and the yellow. Um, okay, maybe I need a hair more pink at some of those edges, but I never will get tired of this. We'll look at this in a room where I have no natural light or where I can block most of the ambient light out uh, once everything is dry, but it's just always fun to see. Okay. Oh, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to. I am now going to very, very, uh, can I do this? No, not well. I was like, I wanted to flip it, but that's not going to work well. Um, so instead, we're going to check. Okay, that's pretty good. We can do like some micro little flips like that. You know, I'm gonna call that one pretty good too. I'm trying to wipe my hands. Okay, there's a little spot with some green we need. How's our yellow doing? Aha, we need more yellow there. I'm gonna add a little bit of color to these little areas that appear more white, squish it through, and then I'm gonna sort of put things back and flip the other way also just trying to look for some white patches as best I can. We might miss some and that's okay. Okay, I think we're pretty well set. Um, but I do want to bring over some other plastic wrap. And I've been using the yarn mop to wipe things up. I think we'll wipe things up maybe a bit with some paper towels as well because I don't want, as we start to like wrap this up, I don't want to bring some of this green onto our yellow. I mean, the yellow going elsewhere wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> Not at all. But to try to protect the yellow, I'm coming over here first and I added some plastic wrap on top of that specifically before going and starting to fold up onto some of these other colors just because I think, as I probably should have left my gloves on, but I think that the color that is at the most risk for, I guess, losing some of itself would be that yellow. But things don't have to be rolled that tight because I'm going to steam 
in a steamer basket. And I'm now going to carefully try to transfer the yarn in, but things are opening up. Let's see. Okay, we've got the yellow separate from everyone else. Things are pretty separate, pretty good. If I do say so myself. And so now I'm gonna go put this in a steamer basket and we're gonna steam set it for, I think let's do 45 minutes. I think that that sounds good. Okay, but we still have dye left and I wanna have some fun, but I'm gonna try to clean up the counter a little bit. And then I think bring over a catering steam pan. All right, I'm gonna bring over this yarn mop that we were using just a little bit to help us. Uh, this colorway isn't really the point of our video today, but we do also have our silk embroidery floss, right? So what I thought could be fun, and hopefully we won't tangle it, we'll do our best, but I thought it would be fun to place some of these in sections, sort of next to our wool. And I am going to add in uh, some of that uh, pre-soak with acid that we used before. Let's put one in here in the middle. So I've distributed those six skeins. One, two, three, four, five. Did I only do five? I thought there were six. Ha, huh, there were six. Let's put one in this corner as well. Well, gee, instead of having one on the side, let's have two in the middle there, like that. But now I'm gonna bring over that water with vinegar we use. Just enough to cover things. And we'll submerge everything. It's like everything, all of the fibers are like, but you dried us, you dried us out. I didn't mean to, my friends. Oh, I'm in a weird mood. <laughs> uh, but then I'm gonna bring the rest of that water over and we are gonna do some immersion playing with these colors, which might result in them spreading out a lot. Uh, we'll see, hopefully not too much but we'll see what the colors want to do and who they, I guess, want to become in a moment. Sometimes people ask me about the real world, like where can you use things that are fluorescent? Where, you know, where does it have an application? And well, my kids are having a fluorescent black light art show for their end of the year art show. So that's an application if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> but more seriously, uh, as I'm filming this, it's Teacher Appreciation Week, and I adore the kids' art teacher, and not just because she introduced me way back on Zoom lessons as a real-life artist, which I very much appreciated, but she's just wonderful. And I don't believe that she knits, um, but maybe she'll have a use of this as string in some kind of capacity. So I haven't decided how... We're gonna go about this. But I'm just gonna splash some of these colors on. Maybe we'll do like a bigger segment. I mean, because we could do rainbow order, but we also don't have to. I'm kind of enjoying being very free with this. Let's do some, some blue. Our blue mixture. I used most of that black light blue over there. Just for the record, I've got a tiny bit of it left. If I had thought a little bit more clearly, then I would have put uh, the blue in between the yellow and the green to try to keep it away from some of the pinks, but that's okay. Um, I don't think it's a problem. Some orange. Who haven't I used? I haven't used the red. Maybe we'll put the red in two places, like over there and over here. And I do want to add more color, but I think I'm, ooh, because see here, there's some of them are blending. Oh dear, is what it is, is what it is, but I'm enjoying some of this randomness I'm getting on the silk, but too much of it is one color. I should have put the silk all in the middle. Uh, you know what? Let's just go for it. There's only a hint of the blue left. 
and the pink's gonna spread on it, but we're gonna put it there. We're gonna add some yellows up there. I feel like, an, oh, there's nothing left in there. Uh, I feel like enough of these colors, um, uh, or the yarn is spread out enough that we should have reasonable coverage. We should be able to get pretty nice coverage uh, overall. And yeah, some green there, a little bit down there. So that red feels all alone. So maybe we'll bring some pink. This is not very much pink. Yeah, because look at how that became like less bright. But I don't know, I wanted something that felt like random and fun. And fluorescent. So yeah, the, the yellow, especially with the natural light on, and I even have that other light on. But now if I bring over the black light, the blue actually does not feel as fluorescent as some of the other colors, but that's because the yellow is so much brighter. Um, and so we'll see what becomes of this. I may decide to do something else for the art teacher. I think this is really pretty, but I think I also picked a little too many things that blended and shifted. We'll pop that corner in. Oh, fun. Um, I am curious to see what the colors look like on those little silk minis. They're pretty random, but that's okay. I mean, we're trying it out and seeing what this kind of technique does to it. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low, and we're gonna heat things for 30 minutes, but I'm also adding more acid, because everything is non-super wash. All right, now we'll wait. Well, it's very cute, especially in like a very random ram rainbow kind of way. Now, I did notice something kind of interesting. Let's zoom in on the blue. Okay, and now I'm going to bring over the black light. And I don't think it's picking up on camera, but everywhere I look, it feels like the like silk is popping is popping more than the wool, at least to my eye. Uh, it definitely feels like the silk there definitely feels just brighter than everything around it, at least a little bit. Back to the blue. The blue itself does not feel as fluorescent as a lot of the things around it, but I've got it, the light right here. As I first turn it on, you do see that light come from that center. It is still fluorescent, it's just softer than those greens around it, and so therefore it looks dark. Uh, we'll take a closer look at it when I can remove the ambient light. A time will come where I am no longer, oh, there's a little bit of blue left, uh, where I'm no, and a tiny bit of pink left. Ooh, a fair amount of pink left right there. Uh, a time will come where I'm no longer rushing to pull out the black light, but I'm just so curious about how it blends in with everything else. But what I will say, as we look and see that there's still more dye. I am gonna turn off the heat and let things cool off slowly. And on top of some of these pink areas, I'm just gonna add a little bit more, whoops, acid. But I'm starting to say, there will come a time when I will not pull out the black light at every opportunity. I'm just still so excited to have all of these colors. Uh, and yeah, so, the heat is now off, but we're still on the warm stove, um, so it will cool on the slower side probably. But as soon as it cools, then we can go and wash it. But let's check in on our steamer basket. Because this, as I turn off the heat, I am extra, extra excited for. So things look as they did when we left it, which is good. I have no idea uh, how much color uh, may spread or what. Ooh, the green, does that look different on the bottom? No, it's just we're seeing some more blue. Uh, this also, I want to let cool slowly. Now, with the yarn here over the steamer basket, it will get a little bit more heat, uh, and I don't think that that's a problem. I don't think that's a problem at all. I know we're wrapped in plastic wrap, but you gotta humor me. 
<laughs> that is so fun. That is so fun. Um, oh my gosh. Look at the like the reflection of some of that light off of the super basket. That's just so fun. Um, you can't see quite as much because the plastic wrap's in the way. But all the fluorescence is there. What? I mean, it wouldn't have gone anywhere. I just, I'm excited. <laughs> I love how I was gonna make this like extra skein really just be, whoop, a, like time lapse, leave no die behind thing. We do have some pinks in there. Um, we are gonna kind of put those on a zip tie and I'm gonna put the yarn in here with soap. <laughs> I love that it was the afterthought or I was just gonna do a time lapse and now I'm talking about it a lot, which is fun. Um, I am going to add all of these little itty bitty uh, mini skeins onto a zip tie to keep them ordered. Okay, the embroidery silk came out so pretty. I can't wait to lay these out. They're like variegated because I just plopped them in super randomly. But right now, we're hoping for not very much bleeding. But what we see here isn't a surprise. The reason why I added some soap right away is that I didn't want those pinks to spread all over and really dull, say, uh, our greens or our yellow, because we still have yellow in here. We do have some mud, um, like in here where more of the colors blended together, but I think that it's okay. I'm gonna add a little bit more soap. We're gonna fill this up. But I'm real excited to see how bright the silk is later. Uh, I think that it takes up color similar to luminance, which makes sense. And so, goodness, what kinds of experiments should we do? I think we need to do some like depth of shade comparisons and color mixing on 100% silk next to, oh yeah, the bleeding's gone. That's great. Uh, next to some wool nylon blends. Uh, I think that that would be really fun. And I mean, using three gram minis, is, a, is slightly challenging, but what if, for simplicity's sake, what if we tried a project sometime where we did it side by side, say 10 gram wool nylon versus like three gram silk? What if we did that and then use the same amount of dye for each thing? Because then we would have three times as much dye on the silk and we could see how different if the colors look closer that way. Well, we could do a lot of things. We'll do a lot of things. But the strategy that I would have for accurately measuring out dye for minis like this small would be to dilute the dyes we're working with and work with a known dye stock. I mean, this was all by feel, but it does feel like that blue fits with the other colors. But now, I'm gonna go get our star of the day, the 100% silk. And oh, she's pretty. Oh no, okay. I'm like, I wanna keep the yellow on top because the thing with plastic wrap is sometimes there's a little bit of dye stuck to it. Uh-oh, there we go. And so I don't want that to touch other parts of the yarn and then, I don't know, mess things up. All right, I'm seeing some pink runoff right away. So I think what I'm gonna do is plop this in. Hopefully it's not gonna be bad. I mean, that per little tiny bit of purple that we have is so, so pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited to take a closer look at this with the black light, but I think that that purple is gonna be just less overall. Okay, I don't know how long it'll take to wash this until it's clear, but right now it looks so neon. We definitely did not use, and I'm adding some dish soap, that should help prevent back staining, which would be dye coming out in the water and then finding other parts of the of the yarn. And so having some soap in there, I found it does seem to help prevent that. Um, these colors, including the blue, are all very vibrant and neon. Uh, I did not, we're getting more bleeding. Um, I did not, <laughs> 
I definitely did not use all of that dye we measured out, which was probably, goodness, around two, one and a half to two grams of dye total, which would not be too much dye overall on, you know, this yarn. It's just that some colors, and I'm looking at you pink, and turquoise as well. Some colors just take so much more, uh, some colors are just much more likely to bleed. And so that is just worth thinking about. But this is so beautiful. And I'm glad, and it's funny that it seems like we're getting orange in here. I'm really glad that I decided to have the entire length of the skein be the repeat. Because a lot of times when I hand paint, I might do the colors where we would end up with, say, blue on one end, red on the other, and then two sections of each of the colors in the middle. So doing it this way in the circle, it is a little bit harder to keep things separate, but I don't see any color transfer. And so I am so, so happy. And I have only dyed this 100% silk base a handful of times. Uh, and I haven't done anything like this on it. And oh, already I am seeing maybe a hint of some orange still, but it's so much less. That's so good. I'm going to carefully, carefully rinse this a few more times. Um, and then I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And when I hang it to dry, Ah, we did see some color run from the orange onto the yellow, but that's likely happened in the smear basket. But when I set it to dry, I am going to keep the yellow as separate from the other colors as I can, just so that way, I don't know, I'm being extra careful with that yellow. This. Oh, it just looks so beautiful. And, I mean... <laughs> This is so, so fun. Um, we definitely, like, I mean, we're not even dry. The blue still glows. It's not as bright as the other colors, but all, who cares? Who cares? It is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I'm in my closet with the wet yarn. Uh, I just finished washing it, and because I, with any luck, it'll dry by tomorrow morning, and I can take it to school with me uh, when I go volunteer. But let's see. <laughs> oh man. So of all of these colors, the blue is absolutely glowing the least. Um, it is definitely glowing the least. And I'm curious. <laughs> it's fun to watch the light travel. Zooming in on the blue, you now can see some of the fluorescence that we have in here. It does seem like we got some pinks going in down there and that does reduce the fluorescence a bit. It's just compared, comparing it to that yellow, it's a lot less. It does glow and like we can compare it to my shoe, which very much does not. It's just in the grand scheme, of the whole skein, it's not very much. <laughs> this is a long digression, everyone. But yeah, I think that with the blue, it's a trade-off because visually, the blue is on par with the other colors. And so that's often what you want. Most of the time when you're looking at something, you're looking at it in white light, right? You're not using a black light. It's a trade-off between having a brighter blue and having more fluorescence. It, that's definitely a trade-off. And so if you want the fluorescence to be on par with the other colors, you probably want to use just black light blue and just pump up the volume of it. And yeah, so I guess we'll learn more about this the more we play with it. But I'm excited. I'm excited to see uh, the silk under the black light. Here is our 100% silk neon rainbow in all of its glory and well, let's take a quick look at it with the black light. We still have lots of uh, natural light coming through my windows. Ooh. Oh, okay, I do see. 
uh, some good blue glow. When I move the light closer, you can really see that pop. Further away, oh my gosh, that is so bright. I don't know if the camera, I feel like the camera can't pick it up. But the blue is definitely less bright than all the other colors. Unless I move the light source closer, then you can see more of that blue glow. And you can see, oh my gosh, the yellow is so bright. Um, all the other colors. Let me um, move the yarn, like fold the yarn differently. Okay, now we have the blue in with everything else. We have the light a lot closer. So you see that flare of fluorescence right away. But the blue, and probably because we mixed it with the turquoise a little bit, it doesn't feel nearly as bright as the other colors. It is still fluorescent. I do feel that, but it's a little bit overshadowed by the other colors, and the yellow is so blown out right now. Let's go into a closet so I can remove natural light. This whole dyeing project worked so well. All right, let's turn off the light. Turn this on. Oh man, the blue, I see it, but these other colors are so much brighter. Look at that red. Oh, that is so pretty because you see the fluorescent fuchsia. Oh my gosh, the blue is just softer. So it's not the same dark spot that we would have had if we hadn't used black light blue. And if I zoom in on it, you can feel the fluorescence more. You see that brightness sort of flare up out of it when you first turn on the light. Um, and it's there. But what's funny is that where it overlaps with the pink definitely feels like one of the deeper spots to me, which is consistent with another video I filmed. I'm not sure the order of things will come out, um, but it isn't as bright when you mix them together. But things at the mixture of the yellow and the blue look pretty good to me. Ugh, I'll never get tired of this. Seeing that. Okay, so here's a mini skein that I think only has the blue, uh, the mixture of the two blues, plus just some undyed white. And I'm struggling to get this to show up well on camera. Because what I see is fluorescence with the blue and then the white. But I think because the silk's a little shiny, it's reflecting some of the light. But you can kind of see just the fluorescent blue patches compared to everything else just being brightened. This may be a little more accurate to what I'm seeing. You can see the blue does glow. Uh, if the blue was not fluorescent, it would feel much darker than the white. It's just that compared to the rest of the colors that we have, it looks so fun, but the blue um, is just not as bright as everything else. Uh, and so it's a little brighter, I think, if we hadn't mixed it. It's just hard to see if I'm capturing it well on camera. All of this 100% silk, whether it was hand-painted followed by steaming or it was the embroidery floss, uh, feels wonderful. And black light stuff, I mean, that's something I care about, but most people probably don't care about. What matters is that we have a beautiful neon rainbow here and the colors feel vibrant on the silk. It's possible they would have been a hair more vibrant if this was wool, but I don't care. We managed and we got a great proportion for things to feel bright here. And the coverage is great. Moving this around a lot, I haven't seen any white spots. The one thing I might have done differently would be to try to mix a neon feeling purple to have more in here. But my goal was to have something that was silk and fluorescent. It's just I think if you want the blue to be more fluorescent, you shouldn't mix it with turquoise. You should use more of that black light blue. But as you move more, use more of the black light blue, it is still very fluorescent. You just uh, might need to be careful because there might be some slight texture differences. I don't really know how to describe that, but I talk about that in another video that'll be coming out uh, from when I dyed yarn at a 4% depth of shade with black light blue. But I just can't help myself bringing out the black light over and over, and this is with all the lights on. So fun. And as for these embroidery silk minis that I, I mean, I didn't really do much with. We used them more for the Leave No Dye Behind. They're very pretty. They took up dye well. 
and I'm excited to play around with this more going forward. So please leave suggestions of things you would like me to play around with on silk. I think as I talked about earlier, we can do some depth of shade comparisons with color mixing on minis because I have these to compare to wool. And so that's really, really handy. But I'm gonna go use my skein twister and try to twist these up. I have no idea how to appropriately list these on Etsy because it's not like a mini skein set, right? Even though it's lace, I suppose, I mean, you definitely can knit with it, but there's not as much yardage. So I'll probably list them as embroidery floss and then maybe have like a drop down selection for color versus having each listing on its own. But if you have suggestions with that, because you're more familiar with the embroidery world, please let me know. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Cabinets, and the last time I dyed 100% silk, I think it was part of my IndieDyer.com review video, and I wasn't a fan of how the silk came out because I don't think I liked what my technique did on it. This silk is all super soft. The two different techniques worked well here. The, the silk doesn't feel stiff or anything like that. Of course, the stiffness from the other video could just be it needs to be handled a bit. Uh, I think when I've dyed silk hankies before for spinning, those have felt stiff until then you start drafting them and then you feel the softness again. So just putting, putting all that out there. Please go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. It is a great way that you can help support the content here. And then every patron gets the opportunity to help direct the direction of the Dipop PS series. And that's a lot of fun. Plus being really, really helpful. Uh, and so it means that I can create more of what you want to see. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to do more neon rainbows. I really can't. But also to play with Silkmore. <laughs> Thanks again for watching.